Good morning, folks. A lot to cover here today, so we're going to kick it into overdrive in just a moment. We've got space weather, seismicity, storm forecast, pre-earthquake signals, and a new sign of Earth changes in this magnetic pole shift. We are starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and there are really three things we want to focus on here. Solar flaring continues, but at low M-class levels. The solar wind impact we expected arrived and produced unexpected geomagnetic conditions, and the sunspots have to be monitored for more. Solar wind up first, a modest impact, weak, as expected. Fair density to the shock wave, but it was slow. The CME was faint, not very speedy, and yet when it struck, it caused a pretty big whack to the Earth's magnetic field and immediately began coupling with the Earth's system. A brief but strong level 3 geomagnetic storm developed, which persisted at lower levels over the hours that followed. Folks, everyone predicted level 1 storms or none at all. Once again, the KP went higher than it should have based on the solar wind. We also have several active regions to keep watching. There were multiple M-class flares yesterday, but short-lived, impulsive, and didn't hurl any CMEs towards the Earth. But we'll need to keep watching as the one set of big sunspots depart, and the next generation slides in. The most concerning aspect is the significant development of the leading umbral cores out of the head of the big southern spot. You can see they are growing and becoming more complex by the hour. Top flare watch there and it appears we've got even more coming in behind them. Twisted spots came over the limb yesterday as well. Let's go to seismicity next, where a magnitude 7 earthquake struck the Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia. No reports of significant damage or impact to infrastructure, no tsunami risk either. We've seen earthquakes take a bit of a surge the last month or so. Up next, we're back at Ernesto, churning in the Atlantic, where the longer-range forecast has been updated. The agreement about a clip of eastern Canada and then a trip to Europe is confirmed, but what happens after it crosses the northern seas is less clear. Eyes on it across the Atlantic. Got two papers up next on pre-earthquake signals of the magnetic variety. Scientists are blazing forward on forecasting models for damaging seismic events. And here we see two added to the list of geomagnetic anomalies present before the quakes. Between these and the atmospheric electricity signals, they really ought to be able to put that forecasting model together soon. Last but not least, folks, one of the first ever Earth changes we tied to the ongoing magnetic pole shift was 12 years ago, critical frequency of the F ionospheric layer. Today, we report it appears to be collapsing. The F2 layer has been shrinking and has begun to accelerate that collapse as the Earth's magnetic field has also accelerated the weakening of the field strength in the magnetic pole motion over the last two decades. No way to blame carbon emissions for this one, folks. Lastly, if you didn't hear, we are taking founding members first for opening festivities at Observer Ranch. If you were a founder, check your email. Everyone else, get all your details about what's happening at ObserverRanch.com. Can't wait to see you all out there in the coming weeks, months, and years. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.